big one tonight. Absolutely, this big. Yeah. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Hey, guess what? You know, you know, manly men have manly appetites, right? So I got a few of my pals, and tonight we're going to kick it up a few notches and make some snacks that would make a linebacker cry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to show you guys we're going to do these snacks. I'm going to start with a shrimp dish that we're going to do in a beer and coconut batter to start with. Delicious. Delicious. And then some crab ragoons. Don't worry about the name. <laughs> I didn't sound too manly, did it? Anyhow, we're going to do some crab pot stickers with hot, hot, hot mustard yeah. sauce. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. And then some super duper manly Mexican bites. And I mean, it'll bite you. And then we're going to do the poor man's manly man version of the manly beef Wellington. Just for us. I got a few other treats here and there, too. Let me tell you. Speaking about manly, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Island. Yeah. You know what? With all these guys in this room, we may blow the roof off this place tonight. Making manly man snacks on Emerald Live. Yeah. How you doing, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Thank see, you. these aren't the cheap seats after all. You see that? All right. Manly man. Now, I got a couple of small little manly shrimp. <laughs> and uh, what we did is we peeled them, washed them, left one tail on, and then I just sort of split them in the back to devein them. That's where you would devein them. Hey, sometimes I devein them, sometimes I don't devein them. Depends what kind of mood you're in. But for this particular dish, it's pretty good to do that. Now, if you guys wanted to make like baked stuffed shrimp, okay, really simple. Just grind up some Ritz crackers, moisten it with melted butter, put some crab meat in there or could use scallops or you could use lobster meat, stuff it in the shrimp, but you'd actually bring the tail down a little bit more. You wouldn't go right through it, but you'd open it up from the same back like that, and then you could stuff the shrimp. But what we're going to do is we're going to make this batter. Now, I got flour, little sugar, pinch of salt, <laughs> and then... We're going to just sort of whisk that together. And we're going to make a simple little, let's see, I think we'll use some Bach, as in beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This happens to be a little Mardi Gras Bach. Yeah. Right, sure. Now, we're going to take the beer, make a little batter. Then I've got, we want it fairly thick, guys. Not that thick, but enough that it can really just kind of loosen it up a little bit. Believe it or not, I think that's going to take that whole beer. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, you can see this is not really that's difficult. <laughs> I'm not going in. 
I was going there, but I'm not going there. All right, so what you want to do now, we're going to take our big shrimp, or as we say, shrimps, season them up with a little essence. And then, guys, look, here's what you do. Hold that, that tail, dip them a little off to the side like this in the batter. You see that? Then what I'm going to do is take shredded coconut that you can buy, dredge it right in there. And the coconut kind of sticks to the batter. See that, guys? Oh, yeah. You won't be finding these anywhere. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Let's test one to make sure the batter's doing okay. 360 degrees. We're going to drop them in some vegetable oil. Get a shot of this here, you. See if it's, uh, when they start going to float like this. Look at this. I think the batter's perfect consistency. See how the coconut's holding on there? All right, so I'm going to bread them up. And when we come back, the guys and I are going to go, another notch! Yeah! tonight we're making some snacks all right guys what you want to do you want to be sure to always when you're frying you want to be able to season them as soon as they come out of the hot oil that's when they're ready to take on whatever you want to season them with at least a little salt maybe a little essence season them right up and I got a little bit, another batch in here, working up. And you see how the texture of those? Oh, those look like some manly man shrimps. You guys look like you're getting a little hungry, too. I know we got the thirsty part of it covered. I'll tell you what. I don't want you guys fading away to nothing. Let me call my super manly man in from the kitchen and then we're gonna have manly man sandwiches for everybody! Yeah! Check it out! Check it out! All right. Look at this. Now that's a sandwich. We got this over here for the back row. Yeah. This over here for that side. Yeah. This all over here for this side over here, right? We got enough for everybody. Yes, Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> you got to have a little sandwich, guys. You got to have a little sandwich. That's right. All right. What we did, another fancy word, we made some chutney. We took some apples, some roast pears, a little bit of roast pepper, a little vinegar, some sugar, because my opinion is you got to have something to dip these nice coconut beer shrimp in here. Don't those look great? See, I wasn't kidding about the sandwiches. Look, Robert, Chef Robert, and the team, they're just kicking it up for you guys back there a few notches. Going to get some of that out. All right. So what you want to do, drain that oil. Now is when you want to season them. They're ready. We'll add a little essence in here. Ah. Oh. You can just kind of, bam, practice a little bam like that. All right. 
Let me have your plate. Only Hot, one. no? Only one? Well, we the got guy, The guy's kind of hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no. There you have it, guys. That's simple. All right? A little chutney in here. A little chutney. All right. Let you guys help yourself here. Then you can make some friends right over here behind you. All right. Crab ragoons. That's it. Now, these crab ragoons. I don't know why I settled on this name. But let me tell you what we start with. You take a little bit of pancetta or a little bit of bacon, dice it up, and render it down. That's what I got right here. And then once that gets rendered and it gets happy, we're going to add a little bit of onion. You guys all right over there? Beautiful. Absolutely. Look at this. My kind of guy he puts the shrimp on his sandwich. <laughs> all right. You can stay. Once, once the onion gets in there now, a couple of three minutes, then we're going to add some garlic in here. You know what I mean? A little bit of garlic. And a little bit of ginger. Now, in this bowl here, I've got cream cheese that you want to get soft. So we got that softening up. Now what we're going to add to this is some ricotta cheese. We're going to add some parsley, but I'm going to chop it. Going to add some green onions in here? Yeah, yeah. Now, here's what we do. Once that garlic and the onion starts cooking, oh, look at that, huh? I'm going to add a little bit of crawfish meat in here now. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, put it in there. Watch this. So we got some crawfish tails with the bacon, the onions, and the garlic. We're going to mix these ingredients in. I think we need to kick it up with a little hot sauce. What do you guys think, huh? Kick it up a little hot sauce. All right, now, here's now what we're going to do. We're calling them now hot crab ragoons. All right, as soon as this cools, We'll add it inside of there. Now, we're going to fold this in. That cream cheese, ricotta cheese. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. Once it really gets cool, now we did all the work. Now, we can add some lump crab meat to this thing. Hey, nothing but the best for you guys, you know what I mean? Now, watch this. Fold it in. Now we're ready to have a good filling here. You can buy these wonton stickers. They call them skins, stickers. They come in a pack. Spread them apart. It's really easy to work with. Okay, they're pretty thin. So here's what we do. We just take a little water like this and just kind of do the corners and the sides. And then what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of that filling right in the center like this, fold it over to make like a little triangle like this. Okay? How's that look to you guys? They look a little... Uh, Petite. petite? <laughs> yeah, need about they a look a little petite for this show. So then what we're going to do is say, we'll bring out the egg roll wrappers. All right? Same, same way that we're going to do this here, four corners. Let me see how big we're going to get here now. Oh, look at this. We got the crawfish and the crab meat in there like that. Oh, fold it over a little bit like this. Now, that's a little bigger triangle, don't you think, guys? 
That's a little more manly man triangle. All right, I'm gonna make some of these up when we come back. I'll show you what they look like. Stick around, we'll be right back. Everybody, Emma Lagasse, and uh, cooking some manly snacks with uh, a bunch of my pals here. Everybody having a good time so far? Yeah. I want to show you guys a special little trick when you uh, have these these ragoons, big or small. See, I'm doing them in a a pan, and I uh, I was telling my friend here, you see how they're brown like that already? It's kind of like uh, pot stickers that principle. So what you do is you turn them over like this without busting them all up. You don't really have to turn them over. I'm going to show you a little trick now. If you do these at home, saw how simple it is, what you do with them. You get brown on one side, and then what you can do, guys, is this. You take a little bit of water. Now we get a little steam going on, right? Cover them up. Three minutes, you're on. You can ring the bell. No, absolutely. Now these big guys are a little bit more difficult. So once you get the side brown like that, hey, when in doubt, don't mess around. That's what I say. Look, we'll add a little steam to these guys. How long? Three minutes. Excellent. All right, we're going to come back to that in a second. Now, let's make that hot, hot, hot mustard sauce. You know, you've seen those cans of mustard, the dry mustard? That's what I have right in here. Watch how simple this is. I got dry mustard. Then I got a little bit of honey, a little light corn syrup, rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, and a little lemon juice for a little acidity. Now, stir that up. That's the hot, hot, hot mustard sauce. That simple. We're going to just put it right in the serving bowl. Oh, it's hot, I promise you. That mustard, you'd be surprised how much flavor you get out of that dry mustard like that. Most people make it such a big deal. Has it been three minutes? Anybody timed it? Uh, yeah. 30, seconds. 30 seconds? Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah, babe. So now we're going to go and get these little guys. Look at that, huh? How about the big guys? You think they're done? They look done to me. Let's see. Oh, yeah, babe. I had a little one there. Now, don't forget, you know what's inside. Crab meat and crawfish. Oh, doesn't that look good? Isn't that a, that's a good technique right there? A little splash of water. Take a little bit of parsley like this. 
That's it, guys. There you have it. All right, a little bit of crab ragoon. <laughs> Portuguese sausage or Spanish sausage. Should he so? Got a few pounds of that, chopped it up. Got a little olive oil. We're going to start rendering down the chorizo. Now, this is going to be for those Mexican bites. Where do you see this? Oh, la is right. Oh, la. How you guys making out with the uh, the sandwiches? Are we out yet? Or are we okay? Yeah, Who hasn't had a sandwich yet? You guys haven't? <laughs> oh, okay. So we have done the audience once. Yeah. I think we should do it again. Yeah. We got plenty. We got plenty. You know me, why settle for once when you can get it twice? Yeah. You guys all right back there? Yeah. All right. Now when we get a little bit of that happiness going on with the shitties, now we're gonna add some onions. Not only are we gonna add onions, we're going to add some jalapeno peppers in here, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, babe. I told you we're going to get close to blowing the roof off this place tonight. Little bit of salt. Not yet. Little olive oil. All right, we're cooking in here. I wish you could smell this at home. Matter of fact, you should call your cable company and complain you don't have smell-o-vision. <laughs> That's what I did. I just drove my car right up to the front door, left it there for the weekend <laughs> with a note. Get smell-o-vision. All right, guys, see, once you start getting that, we're getting that out, the peppers extracted, all that flavor getting out, now, we're going to add about 30 cloves of garlic in here. And we're going to add a little... Uh, we're going to add a little chili powder to that, too. All right. We're in the home stretch. Break up that garlic. You smell that? This is no sissy uh, stuff here. Now, oh, let's break up that garlic some more. All right, guys, just when we got it nice and happy like this, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a corn tortilla or flour tortilla, whichever one you like. See, I had it covered. The air will dry them out. What we do is we're going to take some of this cherise and jalapeno sausage mixture, Put them right in the center. You don't want to put too much, it'll fall out. Pepper jack cheese. Little cheddar cheese. Here's the deal. Do another tortilla. Just flatten it like that. Another sausage. Oh. Yeah, baby. More pepper jack cheese. More cheddar cheese. Another tortilla. Press it down. We're going to make a bunch of these. And when the guys and I come back, another notch!
Gibbs and the MLI Band. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Emily Lugazzi for just joining us. Cooking up some manly snacks for my pals here tonight. <laughs> hey, guys, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can do it in a skillet. You got to remember, though, if you're making a, you know, eight, nine, ten, twelve of these things, keep them covered until you're ready because you don't want that air to dry out the tortilla. You can also do some on the grill. Let me show you a quick little simple sauce. You've heard of chipotle pepper? That's a smoked jalapeno. This is fantastic. Look, you take some sour cream, take a little mayonnaise, which most of us generally have in the fridge, the juice of a lime, and then you take a good tablespoon of that chipotle pepper, okay? And what that's going to do is make this sort of simple chipotle pepper sauce for this. Now, flipping it over, if you're doing it in a pan, hold down on the top, flip it, and then it's best to put it back in that way. Okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. Watch this. Just for you guys. Take the plate. Chipotle crema. <laughs> this one looks done. Cheese is melted. So does this one. So you can either just serve them whole. You can cut them. This looks like a good portion for me right here. See, you just peek inside, guys. Make sure the cheese is done. Now, we'll put a little bit more of that cremer in the center. Then I like to just take some cilantro leaves like this. Because as you're eating it, you're taking a bite. It's always good to get a leaf like that. Oh, yeah, it makes it all nice, nice, and happy, happy. There you have it, guys, all right? Joking around, I was calling this a poor man's beef wellington. Call it whatever you want. It's damn good. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never really... Well, let me do it for you. Then you guys will decide. I went to the store. I got some lean, fairly lean. It's got a little fat in it. You need a little fat. Ground sirloin, ground chuck, whatever you can get. Got one of those fancy pound packs. Take some olive oil, a little skillet. What we're going to do is we're going to take that hamburger meat. Going to start putting it inside of the skillet and browning it, breaking up the pieces. So that wasn't so difficult. Wait till you see where we're going with this. Now, in this skillet here, I want to take, I want to add some chopped mushrooms, just the regular button mushrooms, chop them up. About a, maybe eight, ten of them, depending on the size. Again, a little olive oil. Now, mushrooms were going to suck up. They absorb things, so they're going to suck up a lot of that olive oil. Salt. Fresh ground pepper. Awesome. Then we're going to add just a pinch of thyme to that. And some Worcestershire sauce. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't get enough of this stuff. Tell you what, you take a bottle of this, put it in the sauce pot with about four lemons and a bay leaf and some essence. Slowly reduce it down about two-thirds of the way. Take it off the stove, strain it. You want to talk about an unbelievable New Orleans-style barbecue sauce like you want to do fish or you want to do shrimp in it, it'll black you out, I promise you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Now, 
while I'm browning this meat, cooking these mushrooms, getting things happy, should be a good time for you to go get a cold one like we have here. And when the guys come back, another knock. Welcome back. Manly Man Snacks in the house tonight. And uh, Mexican Bite. Give that a give that a little ride. Oh, yeah. So you, got the, you get the charisse, and then every now and then you hit one of them peppers, you know, and sort of the steam goes, shh, shh. Hey, I waited to add the onions and stuff, guys, because I wanted to show you when you're browning this meat, right? I don't have any seasoning in here yet. But this is a good time that if you have a lot of grease in here for some reason, you may want to get rid of some of it, okay? Because you don't want this overly wet. So that was the whole thing also about the, uh, the percentage of fat. I'm gonna add salt to that meat now. Fresh ground pepper. Then I'm gonna add some onion. Get that onion going in there. Then to kick up the spice level a little bit, we're just gonna add a nice pinch of crushed red pepper in here. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, man. And then what we're gonna do is add just a little bit now of uh, about good two tablespoons, I'd say, of tomato paste, which is gonna give it some richness as well. All right, now that's cooking. You see the Lee and Perrins, the Worcestershire sauce, reducing out on those mushrooms. Can you imagine how happy these are right now? <laughs> well, we're gonna make them a little bit happier. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of cream to this. And we're gonna start letting that. So now, here's what we're gonna do. During the commercial break, what I did is I actually made a little bit of mashed potatoes. You can make them the day before for this particular dish. Because guys, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn this off now and let this start getting cool. Except for the mushrooms. But I'm gonna turn the meat mixture over now and turn it off. Here's what we're gonna do. We got the mushrooms. We got the meat mixture with the onions, crushed pepper, tomato paste. We got the mashed potatoes right here. Like I said, if you have them left over, that's even better too. But you want these fairly thick, okay? That's the three components. And then now you can go to the grocery store and you can get puff pastry sheets, generally in the frozen section, unless you got a buddy that's a baker or at a bakery. You want to get them about the size of a sheet pan. You guys are with me so far? Yeah. So, here's what you do. You can do this, like I said, ahead of time. We're going to cut the dough directly in half. Two pieces. We're going to take the meat mixture, put that on the bottom. I don't know why I'm screwing around with this little thing. <laughs> oh, a spatula! <laughs> yeah, you know, you guys could have did it. Oh, look, he's got a spatula for a two-year-old. <laughs> That's it. All right, talk about manly. Here we go, watch. 
Obviously, these mushrooms are cool now. <laughs> Shh. They got government police for that stuff. Now, I want to give you the gist here. So you got the meat, you got the mushroom mixture, right? Then you take some mashed potatoes. Then what you do, guys, take a little beaten egg, or what we call an egg wash. You add a little, a little uh, water or milk to it. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to fold this thing over. Okay? Make sure we seal it. Make sure the sides are sealed as well. Make sure the sides are sealed. Then what I also do is I get a fork, just sort of crimp it so it doesn't come out. Now, we're going to egg wash this. You guys are right over there. <laughs> and then what you want to do is you just kind of want to put a little vent with your knife like this to let some of the steam out. We're going to make a bunch of them up. Then we egg wash them. 375 degrees. Like I said, you can make it ahead of time. When you're ready, 375 degrees. Egg wash it. We're going to bake it in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. Okay? Hey, guys. Piazza Mercado in Bay Ridge. All right? They're the ones that sent those sandwiches over for you guys. Okay? All right? I want to thank them. And when we come back, one more night! Welcome back. Kicking it up with my friends here. Snacks tonight. Not just regular snacks. Manly man snacks. All right, look, here's a couple of things. I got those little Wellingtons, if you will, in the oven. About 25 minutes. I made a little gravy here. I took some beef broth, made a little roux. Here's one of the biggest things that I get asked about. If I make a gravy... Actually, two things. Why does it taste like flour? It tastes like flour when I taste it. You're not cooking the roux out enough. You got to let it simmer. You got to cook that flour out of it, guys. Second thing, what happens when I make it and it comes out too thick? I want it thinner. Relax. Add water, just the seasoning. You could add Worcestershire sauce. You could add red wine. Yeah. But just relax. It's going to be all right. All right, after 25 minutes, this is what you do. Go to the oven. Look at these now. See these? Take some cheddar cheese. Take some cheddar cheese like this. And then we'll put them right back in the oven. Finish them up for the last five minutes. Are you with me so far? Yeah. All right, I had a question about what to do when you want to kick up your beer a notch. Here's what I do. I take a beer. Try this sometime. Take a slice of lime or two. Slice of lemon or two. Put them in the bottom of your glass. See? Spoons of... Better just for steering. Look, you just <laughs> stuff them in there. You see what I'm doing? Then you take your beer, nice and slow. Oh, yeah, babe. There you have it, all right? After they're melted, 
Put them right on the old plate like that with a little gravy. And there you have it for all my manly man buddies. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emma Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.